Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm back again. I know it's been a while, but I'm back and we're doing another top 10 videos. This time is Brandon Maldonado. Brandon Maldonado is an artist that I met by chance on an airplane. I'll leave the video on the description box below because I've talked about that encounter before. But anyway, he's a great artist, very talented. I love all his work and we're gonna do a top 10 Brandon Maldonado video. Also, before you do anything, subscribe and check out brandonmaldonado.com where you can check out all his art and he has a cool online store where you can buy prints, t-shirts and things like that. So make sure to check that out. So let's get right into it. Painting number one uh, is titled Our Lady of Merciful Fate. Now, if you like music and if you like country music, I think the Sacram brand is country. Well, anyway, the Sacram brand, their album titled Uncage features this painting on the album album cover, which is by Brandon. And I saw this painting back when it was still on the easel. So in person, it's just very, very breathtaking. Uh, his influence on this one is uh, John Van Eyck, who's a, I, think, I would even say the best Renaissance painter would be John Van, John Van Eyck. And this painting is referencing uh, the Arnolfini portrait, the Arnolfini, Arnolfini wedding portrait, which is um, a couple on their wedding day, I guess. Because I don't really know much about the painting, I just know it's by Dan van Eyck. I know it's a wedding portrait. Uh, I also don't know why she's wearing green instead of white. But anyway, this painting um, inspired Brandon a lot and he references it in this one. You can see the chandelier that's in the Van Eyck painting is a crown that this, that Our Lady of Merciful Faith is wearing. Um, the tiles in, are not in the Van Eyck, but Van Eyck has done paintings. <coughs> 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 Sorry about that. Van Eyck has done paintings where his tile work is very impressive. And this tile work in this painting is also very impressive. The beadwork, just everywhere you look on this painting, there's an impressive amount of detail. So now let's go to painting number two. Now painting number two is titled Passage. And this painting I also got to see more than once because I saw it when it was shown in Albuquerque and then when it was shown in uh, Longview, Texas. Uh, the collector of this painting is in Midland, Texas and I hope to one day be able to see her entire collection because I don't live too far from there. But anyway, this painting depicts a funeral procession of an old man being carried to his funeral resting place by his elderly friends. And obviously they're headed in the same direction as the guy in the coffin. But an interesting fact about this painting is the dog that you see there, that's his actual dog called Picasso. I think this painting is great and very important in Brandon's career because it's a clear reference to the paintings by <clears throat> by the old masters that painted it using diptychs or triptychs and things like that. I think he's very I think he's very heavily influenced by Renaissance art. <clears throat> now painting number three. Well this is not a painting actually this is done in ink. Uh, this is titled La Catrina de la Noche and I included this in here because a lot of Brandon's work is influenced by Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead. This particular one here it's a, a reference to La Catrina which is a character created by Jose Guadalupe Posada. Jose Guadalupe Posada was a political cartoonist, printmaker, engraver, and other things. But his political cartoons during the era of Porfirio Diaz focused on, you know, the the difference in classes in Mexico. The poor were getting poorer, the rich were getting richer, and the rich were very concerned about European fashion, European ideals, which almost makes it seem like they're dead in the inside. They're in a they're in a post-revolution era and their ideals are completely out of line with what people in Mexico are, are living. In. So anyway, that's just why I like this one because of the reference to Jose Guadalupe Posada because it's, it's, the Catrina has become such a reference for Day of the Dead, <clears throat> but it's just more than that, you know. But of course, Brandon did his own take of it. Uh, enjoy the background. It's almost like you're being hypnotized. Uh, the way she's walking her dog, her dress, the hat, it's all very ornate, representing fashion in that era. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite ones, The Birth of Creation. And in The Birth of Creation, it's God creating the world, right? The sun and the moon. And in this representation, God is a woman. And most people think of God as being a male figure. But anyway, women are the ones who give birth. It almost makes sense that the creator of the moon and the sun be a woman because they give birth. She's also painted in the Day of the Dead, Sugar Skull style. And that implies a necessary relationship, you know, between both creation and destruction destruction, life, and death. Brandon's work is heavily influenced by, you know, the notion of death. I think death is something that we all struggle to accept or to, or to really understand. I don't think you ever will. I think everybody has their own ideals based on how they grew up and what religions they all have, but I think death is our common denominator we're all gonna experience, and I think his work touches on that. Alright, now, this next painting is inspired by Michael Angelo's 
Pieta, great sculpture. I'm so blown away with how talented Michelangelo was. And this particular sculpture empire is and this particular sculpture empire inspired, inspired Ramon. This particular sculpture inspired the next painting, number five, which is Ascension, which means to, I guess, rise up. I don't really know why Ascension is. I'm assuming it's that you're being taken up into the skies like the painting is here. Um, yeah, it is. Ascension is to rise up because in Spanish, Ascension, el ascenso is to go up. So yeah, Ascension means to be lifted up or taken up. And here, you know, the body is in the same position of Jesus and the sculpture by Michelangelo. But here, the whole aspect of Christianity is taken out of the painting and she's being lifted by butterflies with very beautiful creatures. You know, they undergo such transformation and I think that it's symbolic in a way because when we experience death there will be some sort of transformation that will be leaving this body behind who knows what happens next but there will be some sort of transformation unless we just end and then there's no trans well yeah you just stop but anyway this is a very beautiful painting and he did it in two different styles this was the first one and then he did the second one uh, I love both of them I think they're Beautiful, but if I had to pick one, I don't know which one I'd pick. I think I'd have both of them. You know, I think I'd pick the first one just because that's one I saw first, and that's the one that I have seen the most. So. Now, number six, Till Death Do Us Part. I love this one simply because their outfits remind me of those vintage photographs that actually Brandon uses to create um, other works of art with them. But anyway, the way he painted her dress, her face, but what's more what strikes me the most about this painting are the woman's blue eyes. Like, I'm really captivated by her gaze. I don't know, I just I just really love this painting, and I, mean, I don't believe in marriage. Or till death do us part, I don't believe that I can oh, let's just not even go there. But anyway, it's a beautiful painting. I love it just because of her eyes, how much they captivate me. It's like, it's just so perfect. I love it. Well, anyway, painting number seven, the confrontation. This painting also got to see it. It's pretty big. And actually, I did um, our own version with my students at school, so that was kind of neat. But in here, it's two women. One of them's alive, and the other one's dead. And she's kind of confronting that moment, you know, and do come face to face with death. And if you see closely uh, her eyes, the glaze in her eyes, a little glare, it's actually a little skull in each eye, the woman with the yellow dress. This painting reminds me a lot of like Princess Leia just because her hairstyle she's wearing. And actually Brandon Maldonado was influenced a lot by Star Wars, I think he's a fan and he's influenced by the cartoons of the 90s, popular culture in that time. Therefore, you know, the big eyes, the long netted necks, things like that. Number eight is titled The Portrait of Madame Borfrey. Bor the Portrait of Madame Borfrey. I don't know how to pronounce that name. But anyway, I love this painting because it's referenced in Picasso. And Brandon Maldonado has a whole series titled Picasso's Thief series. And in this series, he takes Picasso paintings and remakes them, he makes them his own, and this series is an attempt to take my favorite elements from Picasso's work and try to take the style to another place so as to not be completely redundant of what has already been done. And that's Brandon's words directly taken from his website, make sure you check it out, brandonbandonado.com. Well anyway, this is no one in particular. I love the fact that he recreates Picasso's, I think it's a fresh new look on Picasso's work, because I think when people do Picasso, they kind of try to replicate, and this is kind of just doing his own thing with the, with what is Picasso known for, which is Cuba's blue period, his rose period, like he's taking those elements and then kind of just making them completely his own. This one I also got to see, and this one was inspired obviously by Picasso, but he also spent some time in New Orleans. So there's a lot of influence from, you know, how people dress for their festivals and things like that. Very beautiful painting. I love the sky in this one. And there's a certain amount of sadness. Now this last one is also one of my favorites. I think it's a beautiful painting. I like, um, one, of, one thing I should mention, Picasso had a rose period, and Brandon has a rose period, and this painting is from his rose period, and I just love those roses in her hair. I created my own version of this, inspired by this work, and I'll show you right here. I just, I don't know, just the way she's looking at you, and it's just very, very beautiful. I like how the background is muted, kind of like her skin, the lungs, <coughs> which mine are about to explode right now. <coughs> but anyway, I really, really, really love this painting, and then, I mean, me making this one is just like an homage to what Brandon's work has meant to my career as an artist and you know he's paying homage to a lot of artists who have inspired his career as an artist 
So I think it's a, it's very interesting how I got to meet him. Like I said, the link is below, so you can and I'll tell you more about how that was. Brandon Maldonado is a great artist. Visit his website, brandonmaldonado.com. He's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So if you're ever in Santa Fe, also check out the Pop Gallery because they carry his work there, and it's also for sale there. Tell me what you thought of Brandon Maldonado's work. Which one was your favorite one? Have you heard of this artist before? Have you seen his work? Make sure to like, subscribe, and like I said, uh, visit brandonmaldonado.com. You'll get more information about the artist uh, and you'll get to see more of his work and also follow me on Instagram I'll leave my link my name right here and till next time Please please go over to my channel and watch uh, the other videos I have in there and pues nada, adios y bye